Yeah. There it is. Well, I, I'm looking up the definition of crummy. Crummy. And crummy has something to do with being all like crumbs of bread, but it also has C, prehistoric women, 1950. Now, I'm not sure. I mean, this, you know, these dictionaries will give you these, you know, these literal definitions. Gosh, you know, you can't go by these literal definitions. Sometimes you've got to go for, for some connotation, right? Uh, and that denotative level might not do it. I'm not thinking this film's that crummy. Gosh, you know, I really have to blame Smokey for that, too. Smokey kind of preset me on that. He was saying, gosh, you know, uh, this film, Prehistoric Women, got me all thinking here. You know, I want to watch some stuff. You know, I really got some ideas what this film might be about. And then, uh, hey, a lot of it takes place in the dark. Can't see what's going on. That's pretty crummy. Well, Smokey, settle down there. Okay. These guys are artists. Big artists. And they've got a stylistic thing going on there. Yep, yep. When women look like they might be nude, you put them in the dark. Yeah, okay. And, uh, well, you have to squint hard, but maybe. Okay. I I'm not thinking. 1950? Gosh, this is not a nudie cutie. Okay, this thing was released right in mainstream. Prehistoric women. It's directed by a guy named Greg Tallis, who also did Sirens of Atlantis. He was more of a, uh, an editor. He edited... Jean Renoir's The Southerner. Whoa, that's a good movie. What's he do? What's he doing doing here? You know, he did Night in Casablanca. I just saw that a couple days ago. That was one of those, yeah, lesser Marx Brothers films. But a lesser Marx Brothers film is uh, well, a leap and head in better than prehistoric women. Hey, he also did a film that a friend of mine really likes. Likes these dog movies. Uh, My Dog Shep. You know, with the title like My Dog Shep. Uh, that's, uh, uh, I want to cry. I wonder what happens to Shep in there. Does he disappear? Does he run away? Does he get hit by a car? Do I have to get a little puppy to replace him? Oh, whoa. No. Okay. Now, prehistoric women, 1950. Uh, a little bit of fun here. Got these uh, women folk who kind of come of age. And, uh, you know, they're dancing around, doing this uh, fertility dance because they need men. Something about their mothers earlier on kind of rebelled against men. You know, because men were making them carry things around. You know, man kill a, like a beast over there, and woman have to carry it around. Woman get mad, woman not like do that. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so they, they rebel and go off by themselves. And they got these kids, so I guess, you know, uh, you know, uh, they left at a certain time in their lives. Okay, and these uh, all females grow up, and their biological clocks must be ticking pretty fast, because they got to find some men. Okay? And they got this, the wise one, you know, the wise one helps them out. Okay, the wise one has all the lore, understands about men and things like that. And uh, Tigri, oh, I love that name, Tigri. Tigri sort of the, the leader of these bunch. That's played by uh, Lorette Luez. Uh, and she actually was at the time the wife of uh, Greg uh, uh, Tallis. And uh, they stumble into some men, okay, and capture them and uh, keep them up in tree, uh, tree houses, stuff like that. Really fun. Jethro Bodine would have been good in this thing, too, I think. Uh, and one of the guys, Alan Nixon, plays Ingor. Ingor. Er. You know, Ingor comes from another tribe. These guys all come from another tribe where, well, they treat women real rough like terrible. Okay. And this is sort of a women's liberation type movie to a certain extent. Don't take me too far on that. Okay. But Ingor, Alan uh, Nixon, might ring a bell on your head. It's going to ring one in mine in a few minutes. You know another movie he's going to end up in? Mesa of Lost Women. <laughs> now, folks, it's interesting. All trails lead back to that movie. Yeah. Almost every movie you can think of, everything leads back to Mesa of Lost Women. You can take my word on it. Mesa of Lost Women seems to be like the, I don't know, everybody's gravitating towards it. Chris Pin Martin, all the great guys show up in that movie. All the great camera guys. Great music, too, in that film. Okay. Uh, Prehistoric Women is, uh, eh, fits in that tradition like uh, One Million Years B.C., uh, Caveman, uh, films that deal with Neanderthal-like cave people who don't speak English. They speak this weird language. Like that, and they, uh, they understand each other. And it's interesting, it's always different all the time, but they're saying the same thing, but... It's, it's weird. Like, okay, here it is. 
Yeah, Yep, drink some water. Yeah, Oh, yeah, clean your windshield off while you're at the drive-in. All of these things, you know, same thing over and over again, but means different stuff. Now, they're not subtitled like that, uh, you know, uh, one of my favorites is that Clan of the Cave Bear. Yeah, yeah. There's another crummy movie, and it really is like this. This one here has great narration. This guy, uh, David Vale, he's the, he's the narrator right here. Oh, look! And you're watching him, he's building fire. He discovers fire, and then the commentator says, he discovered fire. It's like, hey, whoa, I didn't notice that. I thought he was eating a sandwich or something like that. Uh, gosh, thanks for telling me. Mr. Commentator. Okay, uh, so all that obvious stuff. You'll see that all the time. It really drives you crazy like that. Uh, now, he was not in Mesa of Lost Women. I wish he was. Okay, he would have been a great great guy to be in Mesa of Lost Women. Uh, the guy who shot this, Lionel Linden. Hey, a pretty good cameraman. He shot the Manchurian Candidate. Whoa. Conquest of Space, one of my favorite films, too. Black Scorpion. So he kind of works his way up or works his way down. Okay, works his way up if you think of Manchurian Candidate much later. And uh, prehistoric women, you got to start somewhere. Someone came up to me and said, "We want to make a movie." And I go, "Well, yeah, I'd like to make a movie. Uh, what is it? Oh, uh, we've got a script for prehistoric women. Do you want to do it?" Well, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Uh, hopefully, I'll build my way up to Manchurian Candidate or to Mace of Lost Women or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Now. You're gonna have, there's another guy in this film, Johan Peterson. He plays this big guy. He plays this giant. His name is Guadi, Guadi the Giant, you know. And you'll see women running in from the forest or in the jungle, and they'll, they'll go, Guadi, Guad. Oh, what the heck is this Guadi guy? He's this big, tall guy. Okay? And he's a representative of this big tribe, I guess, but there's only one of them. Okay? So it seems to me, just kill him off, and you've got the whole thing figured. Now, uh, Gwadi terrorizes these guys. Uh, and this Johan Peterson, who was this Icelandic guy, okay, uh, was the guy who uh, played this. And he, he, was, uh, he was credited to be over 8 feet tall, but he really was only like 7'10". So but we all lie about those things, right? About our height and weight and stuff. You know, we can't, uh, can't begrudge him a foot or so. Okay, now, prehistoric women. I think you'll have fun with this movie. Very uh, educational. I'd get my notes out, get my papers out, and take notes on this. You're going to learn about uh, cave folks and how they lived. You'll learn about the invention of fire. I always wanted to know about that. Learned it here. Uh, you'll learn some other things about how to use fire, too, as a weapon, and how to cook food. You'll see one of the first cooked meals in here. They throw some food into the fire accidentally, they pull it out, and they eat it. And it's, whoa, you know, everybody thinks, you're crazy for eating that burnt stuff. Good ideas. Kind of catch on. Probably going to set up a franchise of cave uh, situations or something like that. He'll have fun. You'll have fun. Prehistoric women. Not crummy. Forget the dictionary. Forget Smokey. A lot of fun. Greg Tallis. Roll them, Smokey. <laughs>